All right, so you're gonna patch a hole in a piece of drywall that's broken. These are the tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need some kind of backer support, first of all. You wanna put that behind the drywall so it's rigid, it doesn't cave in. You're gonna need some kind of saw, utility knife. You're gonna need to cut the drywall to fit it to the hole. You need some kind of marking gauge, a square, a level, tape measure. You wanna make these uh, pieces precise so they fit in cleanly. Next thing you're gonna need is a drill, some screws, so you can attach the wood to the back of the drywall. You can attach the new drywall to the wood. Then you're gonna need a piece of drywall that's gonna fit your hole. And you need some mesh tape to start finishing that surface of the drywall. And then you're gonna need some compound to fill the cracks and the holes in the mesh tape. This is a starting compound, it's pretty uh, rigid. It sets up quick, you can get your first coat on. This is gonna be your second coat. It's easy to sand, you can put a couple coats on, it dries a little longer, but you can use a heat gun to set that. Some spackling compound if you just have a little hole to fill. Then you're gonna need some trowels to spread this compound on. I got a nice hawk here, it's called. You can put your mud on here, you can take your trowel, eight inch, spread it around, fill your hole. Got a six inch putty knife you can use to spread the compound on. And then you're gonna need a sanding sponge, dust mask for all that mess after when you sand it and make your patch nice and smooth, ready for prime and paint. What's up guys, I'm Derek with the Holmes Group and today we are gonna learn how to patch these holes in drywall. We got a small hole and a bad hole, but we can repair all these very quickly and I'll show you how right now. This little hole will be easy to fix. You just get some spackling. Usually comes pink, it's very nice. When you apply it, it'll dry white, you can sand it, and then you can paint it. All right, with this larger hole, there's actually a stud here. So I'm gonna follow that and use that as one of my backer boards. But I'm just gonna create some lines you can see the hole, like the drywall is broken up here, so I want to make it bigger than the hole. All right, so now I'll cut this hole out. Put some backer boards in behind here, cut a patch, then we can use mesh tape for this, and we'll skim it all out. You can use your utility knife. It's a little more tougher because you kind of got to score that drywall and stop and start at your lines. But you see the drywall just cracks away. Now you can just trim the back of the paper here. And then this piece will come out and it's not stuck behind the wall. All right, so now you want to measure your hole. Now that you have it all cut out and clean, then you want to transfer your wall measurements to your scrap drywall and cut that out. All right, this turned out to be a bigger hole to patch, so we gotta add some support on the back. So I've cut a two by two, and we'll just screw that in here. Also, just in case you can't get a piece of wood back there, or you're very tight on space behind your wall, you can go out and purchase these little clips. And what they'll do is, you don't need much space at all, like, you, That'll slide behind your wall, and then you're gonna put a screw through the steel. And these clips, once you get your new piece of patch in there, you can just break these clips off and tape over it. Now that you've secured backer pieces for your drywall, you can put your drywall piece in. Be sure to make sure your new patch is flush with your old wall or it'll just be harder to fill with the compound after. Now you're gonna wanna go around and uh, screw your patch in so it's secure. All right, now that we've got the patch installed, it's all screwed in, it's solid. We can go ahead and break these clips off that I used. Just wiggle it back and forth and it should just snap. It's designed to do that. Now we have nothing on the face of the wall and you can Go ahead and mesh tape this and uh, finish it. So this is any like fiber tape. You pick this up and what you're going to want to do is cover the seam all the way around. So take your trowel, three inch, four inch, whatever, and take your mesh tape here. Just go halfway on your wall and halfway on your uh, patch. Take it and just 
pull back on a slight angle and the tape will come right off. Make sure it's all stuck down. It has a glue on it, so it should stick to the drywall surface, no problem. All right, so I have my drywall compound here. It's a powder right now. You need to mix water to create like a paste to put it on your wall. I have a hawk. This is what I use. I'm comfortable with it. You could use a piece of drywall if you want. Make like a little volcano, mix it together. You can also get like a little mud float box that you can mix your mud in there if it's easier for you. What I'm gonna do is just add some water to the center of this. And we're just gonna kind of mix it in. It's only a little bit of water, so it shouldn't be, shouldn't make too much of a mess. All right, so my compound here is a sheet, is like a 20 minute set. So it's gonna set pretty quickly. So I can get a second coat on this and I'll be done the job today. We wanna fill all the mesh tape and just fill a feathered joint all the way around it so it's easy to flare out with the trowel the next pass. Don't be afraid to get the mud on there. It's gonna stick. I'm gonna keep my trowel tight on the outside of the joint. Because you can see you don't want a big edge here. You're gonna have to sand off after. This is nice and thin. All right, so you can kind of look at your patch from the side. That's gonna give you the best angle. When you're looking at it straight on, you can't really see where there's parts sticking out. If you look at it from the side, it looks pretty flush and flat. I'd be able to hit that with the next coat and not have to worry about it. All right, so what we're gonna do here, you need a mask, it's gonna get a little dusty. I also have a vacuum I'm gonna hold below. So it's gonna collect most of the dust and you won't have to clean up as much after. The most important thing with sanding is making sure this outside ridge disappears. You want it just to flow into the new, the old drywall with the new patch. Smooth out the outside, flat in the middle, and then your patch will disappear. Imagine that paint's just gonna flow right over, you won't see any edges. And coast over the middle. That's the nice thing about the flat block. Gives you a nice flat edge, big surface. Now after you finish sanding, this is a very important rule. There's all kinds of dust still on the wall. You want to take a damp cloth and you just want to go over it lightly. This won't wreck your finish at all. All right, just get that little bit of dust off the surface from sanding. And there we go. Now you know how to do a drywall patch.